Hello and welcome. This is Rufal Monger, my friends. Mortal Kombat 1 Chaos Reigns, the expansion is now live, and with it comes a pretty sizable patch. Also, a new intro screen, although you can change it to the old look if you want to in the menu. So, we got a lot of stuff to go through here. So, hey, one, all new story mode, check it out. We got all new invasions. Also, some decent changes to how invasions work. The classic Towers of Time have now been added to invasions if you want to check that out. Also, hey, new characters. Uh, we got three new characters dropping today. Sector Cyrax and Noob Cybot. If you check the coverage on the channel, they all look amazing. They all look fantastic. So you probably want to check those guys out as well. New seasonal content. There's new brutalities for everybody. New skins in the core expansion itself you can unlock by playing story mode we got new pre-order skins of course animalities even if you don't have the update animalities are free for everyone along with the balance changes that we're going to cover also nice little quality of life stuff like the cameos just giving you a rough difficulty level right so janet obviously a much more difficult cameo to use than say serena right so serena is casual and Janet is an expert level character. And also, we got more stages. Uh, the Chaosium. And they have, you know, different variations, just like you would expect. And some of the existing stages also have more variations as well. So, just lots of stuff here. But now, let's dig into the changes. So, we'll start with Garrus. But to note, not every character has changes. Uh, there's a lot of changes for a lot of characters and for a lot of the cameos, and it'll all be timestamped, hopefully. So we can skip to whatever makes sense for you, but not everyone changed. Sub-Zero, uh, fantastically enough, is not changed. You'd think he'd be number one with a bullet, if anybody, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But let's start here with Garrus. So Garrus, uh, some simple changes, but welcome. So one, or three, is his overhead. So 4-3 now bounces the enemy. So if you're looking here, this is what it looks like before. We just splat them flat out, right? Now you get a bounce. And with a bounce, well, you can get some combo ability. Like here's an easy example, right? But we'll use an ambush cameo like Goro and easy pop up, right? And there you go. That's a basic combo example, right? But that is certainly something that could have never been possible before. Before, Garrus, like, he needed the move just because it was an overhead, and this is only really overhead value, right? But you just snuck in the hit, and that was it. Now, you can actually get stuff off of it, right? So probably paired best with ambush cameos, but, you know, Garrus being Garrus. He can do all sorts of weird things, like combo into it himself, your time shenanigans, right? So that's pretty all right. Also, history lesson, this is his uh, grab, right? So history lesson now recovers 17 frames faster on whiff. So it's still a lot of recovery, I guess, but maybe if they're asleep at the wheel, now you have a time to block, if not, right? So that's it. But uh, a move that you kind of have to use anyways, being just better is nice. So Havoc, uh, if you're a Havoc fan, you're going to be very happy. This is kind of his expansion after all, right? Like, yo. That green neon sign, that's Havoc right there, right? He's the big bad. So not only is he getting buffs, he's getting a lot of all new moves. Like, let's start with one. Helping hand, right? Bobby over the head, classic. So this move now starts up 14 frames faster. That's a non-trivial number, 14 frames faster, right? And the armored version, now also the armor on it starts on frame six. So as an armored move, it's much better, right? And just as a move, it's much better because it's just faster. It's just better. And don't worry, uh, a lot of the numbers haven't changed. Like it's still negative four uh, with huge pushback on block. You can just kind of toss her out, see what happens, right? Very uh, low consequence. It's still a slower move, but the reward for hitting it's very big and you get blocked, no bigs. But hey, okay, still not the best armored reversal move, right? But here's where we get fun. We got an all new move, the Nether Snatcher. So this is a low launcher. Yes sir, -y, low launcher. That's fun, right? So boom, boom, pop you up, right? 
And not only combo ability, easy combo ability. You don't got to stress this stuff too hard. It got, you'll figure it out, right? So easy launcher, meterless launcher, low. That's great, right? And the enhanced version? Well, it's just a trip. Because the enhanced version is armored as well. So now you have two armored moves. And the other one, well, it's a lot faster than uh, Helping Hand, right? So now you have a more classical style armored reversal, like a normal character in the game. And that is a big deal for Havoc. That's really nice to have. Now this is a low, right? How about some overheads? So we got an all new move, a second all new move. This is the nether stomp, but this is an aerial move. This quarter circle back four, that's it, right? So you can basically do it immediately off the ground, meaning, you know, on top of a, his lows and he's got good, like he always had good lows. Like his down four, his back four, like, Maybe you could throw a lot at Havoc's way, but like those were not the problem. And now just randomly anywhere uh, with some good range, you just kind of go brah, instant overhead, right? So the 50-50 game, low launcher, instant overhead splat is there. Also, you can enhance it. It's a special move, right? So low launcher, overhead bounce. So the fifth, like the Mortal Kombat X vibes are coming back is what I'm trying to say here. Where you got 50-50s in the full combo. So at any point, if someone's like asleep at the wheel, you ate too many down fours, you're getting frustrated and you go brah, and they're getting bounced into a full combo. I don't got the most optimal combos for you this exact second, but hey, new patch, like we're gonna figure stuff out. These new options, Havoc went from like a bundle of good normals, but a fair character in a dirty game to now he's got his own 50-50 suite and can go crazy with it. So that's huge for him. Also jump to four. Now pops up the enemy in the air while they're in the air, which also basically gives you more combo potential. This is what it looked like before. Like you couldn't do anything with it right now. You can do a lot with it. So that's pretty cool. And we'll figure out the new route soon enough. So Havoc, this is his game. This is his expansion and they're treating them good because they're giving them all new options that just were not possible before, that are gonna widely expand his gameplay, his combo ability, his everything. And you know, like stuff like Helping Hand, stuff that already existed, they just made it much better. This is a core move for the character, for good or for real. And now it's just way better because this is way faster. So big ups for Havoc. Kung Lao eating pretty good here. So you may remember the classic buzzsaw move, right? He now has an air version of the move, just back forward one. And it is a gigantic projectile that eats up a big part of the screen. And he also slightly moves backwards while doing it, which I'm sure is going to be fun to deal with. Um, so it's a high like anything else. You know, you can duck it. 7% uh, damage, not bad damage. And it's just looking like it's going to be annoying. And yes, with the right timing, you can do it very low to the ground to the point where like you can do it so low, you might as well kind of just do the regular version, right? So you want to get a little air on it. So it's just annoying to traverse. But yeah, so this adds a new realm to a zoning game. And yes, it's enhanceable, right? So enhanced version does more damage, better knockdown. And the thing about it using it in combo structure is it causes a very extended layup in the air. So basically what I'm trying to tell you here is thanks to this, we have all new combo routes. Like, it remains to be seen if something's going to be more optimal or not, right? But uh, all new options off of what's going to be a very annoying air projectile. Like, look at that hitbox right there, right? And it uh, gives you more stuff to mess around with in combos. So get to the lab is what I'm saying. Shaolin spin. If you hold three, you can now freely move forwards or backwards. That's nice. Uh, for the enhanced version now, you move much faster while holding three. Uh, the point where like it's comical this is like five times faster than i remember it being so like uh if you really want to zoom around hey we got those options ex shimmy the big palm right so how this works is completely different on block now now before uh you just you did it and it was negative seven on block so it was barely negative and then you can call an ambush or something right so now it's different there is no automatic follow-up it is now negative 15 on block so much more punishable but there's a mix up now. So on block, you can spend another bar and then go for that follow up that normally came out on block. And now that follow up is completely is negative too. 
So basically, it's a bit of a game now. You have to commit more bar, but you go for it. Say it was unsafe, right? All right, now is Kung Lao going to spend that second bar and then blow me up? So they can block the first hit and still get smoked by the second hit, right? So they're changing up the risk reward value of it, basically. Uh, definitely getting an annoyingly powerful new move. And some of the classics are changing up a little bit here with Sonic the Hedgehog speed. And as for your kind of brain dead armored moves, you gotta work with it a little bit more. Lewis Kang, one change, but it's an all new string. And new strings can be a lot of fun. So this is back to one. And I see here, uh, getting flashy on that last hit, right? So on hit is a big old splat here. A lot of advantage. You can just kind of dash up, do whatever. And on block, yeah, nothing. It's negative four, safe. It's mid, mid. So no shenanigans with neutral ducking, right? And that's kind of about it. So now, you know, if you're just like kind of going mindless back to three, back to three being like a high second hit, you can neutral duck, right? So now just mid, mid, nah. And completely safe to go for, like you'll lose your turn, but whatever. Oh, just good quality of life. Getting new stuff is always fun. So Raiden, not a lot of changes, but interesting. So enhanced lightning ports. We have regular lightning teleport, right? And the EX version is one that takes two bars. Very expensive, right? But they added an interesting change to it in that once it connects, you cannot combo break anything that's coming until the combo is over. So normally, however you'd want to use it, you know, pop them up, they follow up, right? Now, they can't. Simple as that. You get to do the rest of the combo unimpeded. So yeah, it's a bit expensive, but if you're like knowing this is going to be like a game ender, well, now you have your game ender because you're not allowed to combo break out of it. To note the actual hit itself, though, you can combo break that. <laughs> um, you can't combo break it after it connects, but the actual EX teleport itself, that can be combo broken. So can't win them all, I guess. Also, specifically, it has less scaling, so any combos using it will do more damage. Uh, besides that, like many characters, just a lot of bug fixes, but still, that's kind of cool. So Shang Tsung, keeping up with his devious ways, got a lot of new stuff to work with here, right? So one of the big ones is he can turn into the opponent's cameo. So right now, Sindel has Striker, right? And I can just take Striker's move, the overhead, right? And there's also the enhanced version of this, and it just turns it into a big old bounce. You can get like whatever air combos from. The move you copy is obviously enough different from cameo to cameo. So say cameo sub, you get cold shoulder, right? And usually if you're spinning the meter, it'll give you some kind of launcher. Some launchers are better than others, but it'll give you some kind of pop up. Although once again, it's different character to character. Uh, this widely expands the Shang move set. So something like Goro, you get punch walk and that's pretty cool, right? And enhanced punch walk, you're like, well, this is basically the same, right? But the difference is regular punch walk doesn't have armor. Enhanced punch walk does have armor. So now all of a sudden you got new armored options depending on, you know, who you're fighting, what they got, right? So this is gonna add many layers to the Shang Tsung gameplay. It's not just you and your cameo, it's their cameo as well. That will determine how well you can do in the match. So this is a pretty big deal. And uh, we'll have to go in depth over time, lab it all out, but it's pretty cool. Also pretty cool, one, two, four, the string. The final hit is now special cancelable. So I can do whatever and then go right into specials. Before one, two was cancelable, but now the entire string is. So basically new combo routes are gonna be possible. New shenanigans are gonna be possible. Another thing to play around with. Also, Old Shang has four, three, four now, new string which is low, low. So nice little quality of life. And also it is special cancelable as well. So the gimmicks, the tricks, combo routes, we'll figure it out. Also the patch notes as they're written, uh, snake oil and operation. These are back one, two uh, for the two characters. Uh, the stances are different slightly. So uh, for back one, two young form, it's a little bit slower. But back one to old form is a little bit faster. So there you go. For beta spikes and enhanced beta spikes, both moves now just start up faster. Eight frames total startup. Just to make the move just that much better, I suppose. 
Also, they recover a little bit quicker, uh, specifically three frames faster on block or width. And in the enhanced version, that's the regular version, enhanced is now four frames faster on hit, five frame faster on block and miss. So on block or width, negative five, like that is safe. So good quality of life. Uh, the addition of the new move is definitely the, the showstopper for Shang. And uh, we'll see how it kind of plays out over time. So Tanya out of the gate, big nerf, but fair nerf. So spin kicks, EX spin kicks, whatever you want to do it now. When it is blocked, you bounce right off. You do not get to do the whole animation and call your ambush cameo to make your armored reversal plus on block. Uh, she's got to play the game everyone else is playing, basically. Perfectly fair nerf. Divine protection, now parries projectiles. Well, there you go, we got never forget a buff, right? So uh, depending on the matchup, that can be pretty decent. Not a big nerf, seeking guidance where you build up your charges. Now it takes five frames longer. Not that big of a deal. The enhanced version though is the same it always was. So if you like just need the charges now, that's good. But otherwise, uh, I, I find that kind of negligible, but it is technically a nerf. But hey, we got some nerfs, right? Let's go to another buff. So we got more ways to spend your buff here, right? So Heavenly Hand is a projectile and it's perfectly all right. But now if you have your buff live, if you hold the button, you can enhance the projectile. So it does more damage. It does 80 instead of 60 and also is much faster. So now just more ways to spend your resource, right? That's straight buff as far as I'm concerned. And yes, by the way, this is both versions, the air version as well. Like that's almost instantaneous. Akuma would be jealous of this air fireball, right? So just interesting, good quality life buff. And speaking of these buffs, we're gonna keep going, right? So spin kicks, if you hold the button, you're now projectile invulnerable. So say, you know, you're getting projectiles tossed your way. Normally, well, you don't want to throw that, right? You could armor through it, yes. Might help you out, might not, right? We'll see. But now, you got your buff live and you hold the button. You just clear go through that stuff. You are invulnerable to projectiles. So the Tanya game plan is now much more buff centric. Like you really extra want that buff. Because now you're getting really good quality of life stuff, right? You're getting better zoning and you're getting more options now, right? Because now if you know something's coming away, if you just hold the button, you can say, no, nah, I'm not playing that game and just go clear through it. So that's actually really cool. And we got more. So if you go for drill kick, right? If you have buff live, holding back or forward and four will give you different results. So here's back four. Boom, right into the push, right? Uh, now let's try four and four. Oh, we go right in the teleport and it's airborne, right? So we get combo ability. So a lot of new options. Is Tanya nerfed in some of the more brain dead ways? Yes, uh, but now her game plan is more varied because now we have so many more ways to burn the buff. It's not just yeah. go for teleport, right? So that's actually really cool. Uh, it's nerfed in a way, but now she's much more varied and in my opinion, more fun because more options is more fun. Omni-Man, only one change, but it's a fun one. 4-2 just now always bounces. So before it was just a flat out splat. Now you'll always be able to bounce the opponent. So now say, especially in the corner, like there's gonna be, you know, combos. Combos literally were not possible before because it just splatted the enemy. Now, you know, Bob's your uncle. You got to figure it out. That's the only change, but you know, it's not a bad change, right? Combo ability where none existed before on your full screen overhead is not the worst thing in the world. All right, Takeda, Takeda got a lot. They want Takeda to be a thing basically. So let's rock through this here. So stand one, two. So stand one, two, now just does more damage. First and second hit of the string, now do more damage. If you do one, two, two plus four, that also does more damage. The final hit does 20 more damage. So the string's just improved all around. Forward one, two, first hit does 10 more damage. You do the whole string, forward one, two, uh, two plus four, then that final hit does 20 more damage. Forward one, four, does 20 more damage. Back to one. Now has more active frames. Hey, I'll take it. Or two can now be special canceled, making it uh, infinitely more useful 
as a poke because you can just kind of go for it, right? Shuriken does more damage. Tell me if you keep hearing this, right? Does more damage. That's 60 now instead of 50. The uh, detonator does more damage. Does 10 more damage, right? Everything's more damage. Basically, everything's doing more damage, right? I guess they felt like uh, some of the tools were all right, but his damage output was too low overall. So basically everything does more damage on top of fun tricks like 4 2 now being special cancelable. So good stuff for Takeda. So let's talk cameos now. Jax has an all new move, very hyped up, very interesting. So he has the gotcha grab now, but it doesn't work on players. It only works on cameos. And basically, it'll stop your cameo dead. It's an ambush call, so you can hold block while calling it out. Uh, Taylor made the blow up, you know, certain cameo pressure situations, it would seem. And, well, just grab the enemy, right? And the thing about this, obviously, whenever you hit a cameo, it hurts the opponent. The thing here is, you can kind of keep it going as long as you hold the button. Like, that is not insignificant damage done to Natara there, right? So, if you know they're calling the cameo, like, you can hit them just as well while Jax is taking their guy to town. And obviously, while that's happening, they can't exactly go back. They can't regenerate. They can't go off cooldown. So, it's interesting. There is one little problem, though. You would think, well, okay, this works out. But what about the freak characters, right? Motaro and Goro. Well, um... They solved that by not being able to grab them. Like, you can tap the enemy, like, they'll take the damage from their, uh... Cameo being touched. But you can't grab them. Which sucks, because Goro and Motaro are two of the biggest culprits of kind of, like, brain dead. I know it's coming cameo pressure. So now, even if I know it's coming, right? Like, say, oh, definitely calling, uh, Go or rather, Motaro after your string or whatever. Get the pressure, get the plus frames. Uh, unfortunately, even though Jax is tailor-made with this new move to stop that kind of stuff, he can't against these specific characters. So I think it'll be interesting in certain matchups, but unfortunately, because it doesn't cover everybody, uh, it might be a little limited. Kano, one change, but it's an interesting change. So Kano now, when he does eye laser on block, now does multiple hits on block. And the chip, I would say, is kind of appreciable, right? So point blank, the pushback is pretty significant. And, you know, the chip is not insignificant. So this good stuff for Kano. And keep in mind, too, if you're unaware, like these are all mids, right? So there's no neutral duck in this. So just good pushback, good pressure. Like Kano's always been just solid all-rounder cameo. And this makes eye laser just that much better, in my opinion. This is video editing Rufo Monger coming in after the fact. Looks like we got some, uh, what we call undocumented changes here. And the damn, it, things might be a little messed up is what I'm saying here, right? Uh, things might be a little bit messed up on the Kano and corner combos. So we'll see if this stays. Cameo Kung Lao, all new move. Orbiting hat. So the deal with the orbiting hat is it's live until he runs out of cameo meter. Uh, the recharge rate is not too bad, as you can see. Uh, this is very, very strong. One is a big no-fly zone, right? Like, oh, how plus are we on block? Oh, plus 84. Sure, why not, right? That's a good number of plus to be. So, uh, basically, you can't mess with the character while orbiting hat is live. Because on block, you're plus a billion. And on hit, it creates a kind of stun where the next hit is a guaranteed combo follow-up. So, don't get hit by this or you're going to combo town. Kung Lao, well known as being pretty alright as a cameo. Giving a new very strong move that lets you just kind of dominate the match for the next few seconds. Because, like, you can't afford to get hit by this or it's free combo, right? And you sort of can't afford to block it because you're subject to whatever mix because it's so plus on block, right? It just seems really strong. This is a you want to force the issue kind of move. Uh, hitbox here, as you can see by hitting on the jumps, is very big. Although it is what you see is what you get. So if the hat is behind you, it won't connect till it kind of goes back forward. But all in all, like, Kung Lao is not a bad cameo. And uh, this seems very abusable. So 
So moving on to Sector. Sector has got some really fun changes as a cameo. One, he is now the other character besides Motaro that can take over your Fatal Blow. So when you're doing Fatal Blow, just tap R1 and Sector will shoot a rocket. So someone like Shao, right? One of the reasons early on people really love Motaro with Shao is because Motaro could take over the Fatal, right? Shao's Fatal is slow. Does not naturally combo in many situations, right? And even though a Sector might not be as fast as, say, Motaro, it's still a hell of a lot faster than Shao, and now it will naturally combo, right? That's cool. Helpful for a lot of characters, even. But the big deal is it hits from full screen. And this makes your Fatal, like, very scary from full screen, right? Uh, doubly so here, the projectile's a mid, not a high. It becomes a did I catch you throwing a fireball kind of check, right? Because with Sector at the helm, you are donezo. Caught you. Done. Like, it's, it's really as simple as that. You now have a reaction check from full screen with every character in the game. And keep in mind here, look at Lee Mei's projectile, right? Sector's missile destroys the projectile. So there's no trade. There's nothing like that. If you have Sector on deck, every single character in the game is now a terror at full screen with a fatal blow. They can hold you ransom with the fatal blow. And for characters like Shao with a, let's say, poor full screen presence, that's pretty damn cool. And everybody can make use of it. And of course, we got more than that, right? How about regular missile shot? Kind of an important move. If you simply just hold the button down, Sector, instead of doing the single shot, will now go for the classic homing shots and also two missiles instead of one, right? The tracking's pretty all right, uh, as you can see. Like, even if you are just screaming across the stage, they will catch you. Now, admittedly, it takes a full cameo meter instead of one, but there's kind of no avoiding the missiles. It's two hits, there's more damage, right? Like, it's pretty all right. So, Fatal Blow of Terror, really good. Regular Up Rocket, if you just want to own the neutral for a minute, you absolutely can. And also, Teleport Punch is better. Teleport Punch is faster now. So by nature of being faster, it's going to connect on certain strings it didn't before. Now, unfortunately, let's connect off everything, right? So like Shao 2-2, two, two, no dice there. Uh, still a little too slow for that, but like say back three, yeah. So mess around with your favorite characters, test out the strings. It may now naturally combo in situations it didn't do before. So uh, when it comes to like just buffs, quality of life, sector are big, good changes. So, Shujinko, Shujinko gets buffed every patch and the buffs will continue. Now, he's got two new moves. So, normally your forward summon and your back summon, like you have the punch and kick, both have up and cameo button follow-ups. So, forward summon. Now, after up, you just get a straight up crumple. So, this is combo ability for everyone. This doesn't take any of your meter. It's just a summon call. You can call it as many times as you want. Like, you can literally go crazy with it. And it adds just general combo ability to everyone in the game. It's quite strong. Uh, the back call here, if you hit up, it's uh, actually like Shang Tsung's overhead from MK11, basically. Uh, so it is a true overhead as well. You do have to block it standing. So now, okay, now you can like, create a little bit of fear mix, right? Oh, I know. I've seen this string before. Got to block overhead. Kind of doing your magic from there. General combo ability, general pressure just up again. Shujinko has been buffed, I think, like literally every patch ever <laughs> for the game. And I'm sure this won't be the last one. They're going to keep doing it till Shujinko is the number one cameo. Because I don't think they're going to be happy until that's the thing. Now, Sonya. Sonya is another character. They just want to be good, right? Like, if you didn't catch the last patch, they turn a uh, leg grab into a plus on block overhead. That's not bad, right? <laughs> that's pretty okay. So, Sonya got an all new move in the air and a follow up for that move. So down cameo in the air and she bounces off you and then dive kicks the enemy and it's an overhead and it does bounce. Like you can combo after the fact. Like depending on the character, it might be easier or harder to get combos after the fact, but still like here's a common scenario. Oh, Katana threw a fan at me. Who'd have thought, right? And sometimes now you can like punish her for it. Like it holds you in the air 
Like, it's only a brief amount, but it stops your fall arc, right? So you will not fall on top of the projectile while you're doing this. And it gives you an avenue of counterattack. Now, you might not always be able to get the punish in time, but still, that's pretty cool. Also, it seems to be a bit negative, but like at the distance you should be using it at, not negative enough to get some like punish a consequence. And here's the thing, if you hold it down, like hold down the cameo button, she'll do a follow-up. She'll do the classic MK3 bicycle kicks. So it will take all your meter, but like, yo, they're juggled for like 16 years, right? Like, so you do it and you can just kind of do whatever juggle follow-ups. It really doesn't matter. Like they're up on a silver platter for you. So basically being able to interact with your jump arc uh, for characters that can't normally do something like that, or say characters that struggle against, you know, a more traditional, you know, linear zoning. This just holds you up in the air, gives you an avenue of counterattack, uh, gives you a big launch if you're willing to spend all the cameo meter. And of course, Sonya being Sonya, like, Sonya has been steadily getting better and better in a lot of ways. So I think she's doing okay. Cameo Sub-Zero got some fun stuff. So it's kind of twofold, but the first part here, down cameo, now turns you into an ice clone. And while you're an ice clone, well, it works like ice cone rules, right? So if the enemy touches you, uh, they get frozen, and if they get frozen, you can kind of do whatever combo you want after the fact. So uh, if you're against people who you know are just a little mashy, like they're just always going to hit buttons, this is a great way to just kind of turn that against them, because if you're going to hit buttons, you're going to hit buttons into my clone. Tough luck. And say they don't fall for it, right? After the freeze, Sub-Zero can toss you like it's Mortal Kombat X Grandmaster Sub. So he turns you an ice clone, and he tosses you like you're the ice clone. Big mid-hitting projectile. You are the projectile. Hits from like most of the screen away, not quite full screen, but enough to be dangerous. Also, leaves you plus on block. So like sub is literally hand delivering you to the enemy. And if they block it, you recover first. Uh, you know, even from like further ranges, it's actually more pronounced, even literally point blank. You are going first. So, you know, basically effectively like a neutral skip into plus on block in their face is not bad. And to cap this off, so parry, strong, although it doesn't get lows, but it gets everything else. Projectile where you're the projectile, plus on block, or you know, maybe you just hit him. That works out too, right? But then like, oh, I'm just not gonna hit buttons. Like I'm gonna be defensive, right? So then, you can just cancel it immediately, so I can go, oh, gotcha, throw. So, you can be a little sneaky with it, too. Like, Sub's got the stuff, you know, he's got the freeze, cold shoulder, he gives you more health uh, than, like, a normal cameo does. Like, he does a lot of fun things, and this is a very solid buff. Now, Striker, Striker, he's had his ups and downs in recent months, but here's some interesting changes, and, well, really, the only change. So, back and forward grenade toss are different now. So, uh... Back grenade toss, the lower angle one, just kind of like the same old hit reaction. Bar grenade toss, though. Well, if I could, if I could freaking hit him with it, it just straight up pops them up now. Like just grounded, nothing special. Low gr uh, grenade toss, they're grounded. High grenade toss, they're going to the sky. And also, uh, the combo scaling's been relaxed a bit, so any combos you have with the grenade toss in them will do more overall damage. That's it. But for Striker, Grenade Toss is kind of the reason you're picking the character, right? So that's not bad. Chameleon, only really one change. It's not just like bug fix stuff. Uh, she has a new move called Alternate Disguises. So what it does is it forces a change, and then it reverses the turn order. So normally, I'm Jade right now, right? So normally, if I let it rock, eventually I'm Katana. So basically, normally, the order is Jade, Katana, Melina, Jade, Katana, Melina. But now it's Melina, Katana, Jade, Melina, Katana, Jade. So it just kind of... Works it way backwards, I guess. So if you really need a change and, uh, you know, you're not on who you want, this is a way to do it rather than the usual stuff. It's interesting, I guess. So uh, remains to be seen how useful it'll be. So Farah, Farah's eating some nerfs. I think we all expected that, right? So on the base level, Farah's slide is now more negative in that has more recovery frames on block. So point blank, like, well, there's always going to be a problem anyways, but basically... The, you're going to have uh, some characters going to be able to punish it from certain ranges they wouldn't have able to uh, been able to punish it before. So we'll see. 
that'll work itself out. The big one, though, is now on many moves, Farrah is considered airborne. And now, because she's airborne on all of these moves, things change up on up block. Normally block, okay, negative six. But if I get up blocked on this, turns into negative 31, right? So, basically, if you can hard call out Farrah now on stuff like, you know, stance two, like, the enemy is done. And I think that's very fair. You know, the essence of the mix is, you know, if you have an answer for the mix, if you know what they're going to do, you should call them out and be able to stop them. Now you can. So, Farrah's probably still very strong in the end, but the edge is taken off a little bit. And that is the patch. There's also a lot of little bug fixes and all that kind of stuff. I'll post the notes in the video description if you want to check out every little thing. But I think a very strong patch overall. Some noodle scratchers like, hey, where's the Sub-Zero buffs? Like, come on. It's literally an ongoing joke at this point, right? Um, and I expect more big changes to come. They've been updating the game a lot. Like, last few patches have all been significant patches. And they keep moving the game forward, in my opinion, in a very positive way. And this also, I think, is a very positive patch. Like, people like Havoc, uh, Tanya. You know, Tanya got a bit some nerfs, right? But it's also some buffs. And Havoc is in the game now. So... I like the direction they're going, and I hope they keep it up this way. And plus all the new costumes and all that, right? Like, uh, the Melina skin, the Emperor skin looks sick. Like, give me more stuff like this. So, yeah, to me, thumbs up. Still could use more. It's not a perfect game. We're getting there. Every patch gets better. Of course, we got these uh, chuckleheads here. They're probably going to cause some problems on their own, I'm sure. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but, yeah. Game pretty cool, getting better all the time. Looking forward to see how Chaos Rain goes. And my friends, that is the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. And go out and play some Mortal Kombat.